Building dashboards are one of the most time-consuming tasks in Tableau. So much so that Tableau started something called the Tableau Exchange to essentially give people accelerators, starting points connected to specific data sources just over a couple of years ago. However, I don't think they went far enough because the other half of the most time consuming thing in Tableau is actually dashboard designs and specifically layout. And everyone in the community has been asking for templates for some time, but the exchange didn't really deliver that. Instead, Robert Janicek and Ludovic Tavernier are taking that problem head on. In this video, I talked to them about Tableau templates, something they launched just last week. And in the conversation, it's over an hour and a half long. We essentially broke it down. And I have to say, going into this, I was a little bit skeptical i was a little bit sort of not sure what to expect but by the end of it i was blown away this is hands down the best implementation of templates anywhere on the planet and pairing one of the world's best dashboard developers along with one of the best ui and ux capabilities in the tablet community this is something you have to check out i've talked through the whole entire discussion in this video we've got timestamps below as well so go ahead and check those out jump to the bits that you're most interested in and trust me if you watch the whole video you'll come out of this maybe with some questions you can ask them but also some clarity about how detailed they've gone even down to small minute details that personally i look out for to tell me how good a dashboard is they've covered it all they've sorted it all and they've thought about it all check out this video thanks for watching let's get stuck in yeah um so why, why don't we start with the two of you introducing yourselves let people know who you are what you've done with tableau and how you kind of got to the point where you are today yeah i can start so my name is robert janicek i am currently a ux ui designer now, currently that's, you know, working in Figma 90 plus percent of my day. Although that's what I'm doing now, that's not how I got here. So I used to be an analyst for years using Tableau daily to build dashboards, reports like most people that are probably watching this, right? So I did that for years. And then when I transitioned to a new, a new job there, opened up an opportunity in the team where we needed to actually start designing an application. And I always wanted to go in the user interface direction anyways. So I took it upon myself to kind of transition my skills in my job from, you know, an analyst to a user interface designer. So I took a year, two years to really hone those skills. And, you know, it's been about, three, four years since I made that transition. And that's kind of, you know, where I'm at now. I'm still heavily involved in the BI community. Um, but I think I have the unique perspective of doing both where I was an analyst for years and I understand right. all the nuances of all the different, all the different BI products that are out there, what they can do, but also I understand what it takes to design and build and release a product, you know, application and things like that. So mixing those two fields together really gives me a unique perspective on a lot of this. And I think, I think that kind of shows in the products that we release. So I'm, I'm the founder of Nudge BI, which is really just marketing I put behind you know, a, a suite of products, you would say. So the Tableau UI kit, the Power BI UI kit, and now Tableau templates. It's really just the marketing uh, branding behind it. Right. Um, and so that that's it for me. I think, you know, Ludovic, you can, you can hop in. And... Yeah, thank you, Robert. So my name is Ludovic Tavernier. And... Currently, I am an analytic engineer, business intelligence engineer at, at Ledger. And so before that, I have been in the data field for 12 years now, so quite a long time, I would say. And I first used Tableau 12 years ago. <laughs> it was <laughs> during, a, yeah, during an internship. And then I, I kind of forgot about it. I was busy working on other data products, not only on the front end side, but also on the back end side, modeling data, transforming data with the tools I have at my disposal uh, at this time. And, oh, I, maybe you noticed, but I'm French. 
Yeah, the accent. Um, and with Tableau, so things got more serious uh, with Tableau, I think like eight years, seven years ago. So I got back to the tool. I participated to challenges, community challenges. It opened me gigs. Uh, I was a consultant back then. So it created opportunities to, to work right. with Tableau, of, of course. And I ended up uh, doing so the, the biggest challenges, the RMVs. I went to New Orleans. I participated, participated to the yeah. event finally at New Orleans. And after that, I continue yeah, using Tableau. <laughs> I did not spend so much time using other product, even except yeah, I went freelancing for for two years, so I explored other product at that time. But yes, mainly Tableau. Right. And what is interesting, I think, is I kept my knowledge on modeling data, on understanding what is. Uh, behind the product, be in the back end of the data, and I think it enables me to create products that are robust and that can, my users can trust. But I think yeah, it's a, also a good match with Robert because I always have been interested in in the front end and creating experiences, interfaces my users enjoy to use. Yeah, it's really right. important to me. So, so how, how did you, how did the two of you meet? Because you know you, you've both got a bit of a history in the community as well. So, um, well, yeah, how how did how did this sort of project come about, and how did you first meet? Yeah, so a long time ago, not a long time ago, I would say maybe like 2016, 2017, 2018 time it's frame. A long time ago. I was posting. <laughs> I was posting a lot. I was posting a lot of Tableau public content you know, work to Tableau Public. And I was posting that on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, I'm sorry, formerly Twitter. <laughs> um, and I think just, you know, I would see the things that Ludovic posted and I don't know, maybe he would see some of the things that I posted and we didn't interact uh, a ton. I don't, I don't think, but I think in 2018, was that when New Orleans, was that the Tableau conference? Yeah. 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 And so I, that was the year you were competing, right? That was the year you were competing in the Iron Viz finals. Yeah. I remember that. And my, my mentor, Joshua Smith, was, you know, I was working with him and he knew you a little bit. So we actually got dinner. So it was me, Josh, Ludovic. Klaus. Um, that's and clouds, clouds. <laughs> so we all got <laughs> dinner together in New Orleans, and it was great. The food was amazing, and so that's when I met I met Ludovic in person. Then, so nice. we've we've known each other for some times, and we've always kind of, you know, kept in touch, messages back and forth about like, hey, I just saw the thing you posted; it's awesome. And then we just kind of go back and forth. Um, amazing. So yeah, that's that's kind of how we met there. Okay, and and. And so what spawned the product idea? What, like, what, why did you bring Ludovic into what you were thinking? And Ludovic, what kind of, what, te what tempted you? What made you say, yeah, this sounds like a great partnership? Yeah, so I don't know if anyone has, whoever's watching this video right now has seen our a previous video that Tim released about yeah. the Tableau UI kit, which is a product I released. I mean, that's almost... That's getting close. That's over two years now. Three years, I was going to say, yeah. Close to three years yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for those of you that don't know, it's a it's a Figma UI kit specifically for Tableau. It helps you prototype dashboards faster in Figma. This is a common thing that product design and design teams do to show off to people, clients, leaders, et cetera. And I started to get a lot of emails from people saying, hey, you know, we, we love the UI kit. It's really great. We can show our clients all of this stuff. How do we actually build it in Tableau? <laughs> now, normally in a design system, for those that don't know, the way design systems usually work is you have some sort of UI kit in a prototyping tool that could be Figma, 
I was going to say Adobe XD, but Adobe XD is gone. gone. <laughs> um, sketch. Design teams have a UI kit. And then you need some way to build that thing. So design systems have the UI kit. And then they have actual components in code that allows you to match it one to one. And that's what a design system is. And also, you know, more complicated ones, they give you actual recommendations about how to actually use these components. Yeah. Now, previously, it was just the UI kit, right? There was nothing that links that product to Tableau, to Tableau, yeah. to Tableau at all. So I knew I needed a way to release something that helped people do this better. Now, in my head, it makes obvious sense, but also in the back of my head, I was like, oh, I don't actually use, I don't really use Tableau anymore. Yeah. In terms of, like my skills are kind of less so in that area because, you know, I just haven't been using it in my head is fully in the design user yeah. interface and you yeah. user experience space now. Yeah. So I, I knew I needed someone to help make this a reality essentially. And I thought, you know, who do I consider to be the best Tableau developer? <laughs> and I don't know if, I, I think I've mentioned this before, Ludovic probably doesn't like that I say this. I think Ludovic is the best. And so I, <laughs> I reached out to Ludovic and I said, hey, you know, I want to build this thing that helps people build these dashboards from the UI kit to mm -hmm. Tableau. And Ludovic, you were a little reluctant at first because you just kind of, you just didn't want to, which is totally fair. <laughs> and so I kind of, I think I stopped bugging you for a little bit and I left. I, just, I think I just left it alone for like a while. I think maybe like almost a year even. Exactly. You envision our collaboration very early in, in, after your WIP release. And yeah, I said, I, <laughs> we had back and forth. And at, at the end I said, no, it's not the good timing for for me to help you i won't be there enough for you yeah right at the time mm -hmm. yeah and i i didn't want i didn't want it to just be not amazing so i was like i'm just not going to do it right now i'm not not going to try and do it myself i would rather spend my time making updates to the ui kits and make those as good as possible and when the time comes it'll come um, and mm -hmm. it did eventually, and then Ludovic kind of got on board, and we went from there. It's incredible. I, I, I see things came through my mind, and I'll, I'll sort of back you up on this point about Ludovic being one of the best, because there's, there's, there's two metrics I use for that, which is when I go on Tableau Public and I see something awesome, who is it inspired by? And Ludovic, I think you have a, a distinct style that has spread across the community, and uh, people acknowledge that as well. It's not just that, you know, I see something and I said, I think I've seen Ludovic do this before, right? It's that people reference your style specifically. And for that reason, it's 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 a very sort of common thing. So I, I think you could you, you can you could sit behind Rob saying that and generally I think everyone in the comments would say the same. Um and the second point I had was actually super interesting that some of the best ideas sort of take time to come to fruition and it's it's really it's actually really good to hear that like you, Ludovic, you had the presence to say that if I was going to do this, I need to do it well, and I don't have that time now. And Rob, you were patient, and that's that's something that's super important because I think good products sometimes require that patience for them to sort of follow through when people do put their time together. So it's, uh, I think it's great to hear that because a lot of people have ideas in the community, and in the first instance, when they're not successful, they kind of feel a bit despondent. Actually, this is a great tale of saying. Maybe now is not the right time. There's a better time coming up. So. And that's that's a fairly common theme, I would think. Yeah. Through all the stuff I've ever created. Like even when I was doing Tableau public stuff. Right. I only had like I think it's like eight or nine. I think it's like a very small number of Tableau public stuff. But when I did it, you know, I really did and I wanted to make publish it up when it was super unique and interesting and worth doing. So mm -hmm. I'm okay with sitting on something for years until it's actually good and it provides yeah. tremendous value to the consumer yeah. and user. And that's, yeah. that's, you know, what great products and great, you know, 
things do. So yeah, and I think the selfish question I have, and this is going to be kind of me outing myself a little bit, I've really struggled to have, you know, the persistent passion with Tableau. And that sounds weird because I have a YouTube channel. It's called Tableau Tim. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty, well, you... <laughs> pretty big following. But when I say that, that's different because I think the channel I'm teaching people to have, that's very different. I have a, I have a passion for teaching. When I talk about a passion for the product, I mean, there are times when I've opened the product and I felt no longer excited by it, right? Or I've opened the product and there's just something that's off. And lately I've been saying Tableau prep weirdly is the thing that's kept me excited about Tableau because they just seem to solve these problems I've had. So maybe this is a question for you specifically, Ludovic, you've had a, a very long demonstrable history with Tableau. How have you kept your kind of passion at the level that has allowed you to kind of keep thinking about Tableau and sort of kept thinking about how to push it to its boundaries? Yeah. So to answer, I think I tested other tools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> tried other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah, a lot yeah. And I, I also did consultant and financing with other tools. And yeah. yeah. I always come back to Tableau because Tableau allows me to get stuff I cannot do with other tools. Exactly. Yeah. I, I yeah. So I have much more freedom with Tableau, and at the same time, it's also very well. It's robust. I mean, we have Tableau Cloud, yeah. Tableau Desktop, the desktop tool, Tableau Mobile. It's all suite. Now you mentioned Tableau Prep. So yeah, it's. Yeah, uh, is there is no, it's I don't to be honest. I do not have alternatives right now to Tableau, and I like it. That's okay. I like yeah. to use Tableau, and <laughs> we will mention that. But even the same point, the ah, the bad points, for example, containers. <laughs> I I do I enjoy containers a lot. <laughs> yeah, so. I don't know, maybe I'm different, but yeah, I always come back to Tableau and I I like to, to build with Tableau. Interesting, interesting. I think it's a, this point, I, I'm, I have a video planned about like Tableau versus Power BI and my hot take on those two products is it's not a, it's not a question about which is better. Instead, it's a question about using what you love or using what you have to use, right? And that's not the same thing as which is the better product. Um, in many ways, I think analytics has become a commodity space. And so you'll find the same features in both platforms a lot of the time. It's just a preference of how you like it delivered to you and sort of how it feeds up. So anyway, that's a, that's a sidetrack for another day. Um, so let's, let's not beat around the bush. Um, what have you built? Like what, what have you brought to the community? I think it in the last, was it last week or this week? I can't. It was, can't. it was last week. Last week. I thought so. Yeah. Last, yeah, yeah. Last so week, what, what have you built? Tell the people. So. The name of the product is called Tableau Templates. Now, a slight origin story about where we thought we were going to be with the product <laughs> and what it turned into based on Tableau constraints. Right. And I'll explain some of that. So the initial plan was to do exactly what design systems do, which right. is you break specific parts of the user interface right. down and you combine all of these components together to make something yeah in this case a dashboard now we were originally going to do not something called tableau templates there's probably going to be something like tableau components or something right. like that right and it would actually be a workbook of individual components that you could copy and paste into a dashboard and you combine the components together to build a dashboard. Right. That quickly fell apart that based on constraints. The first one being you can't copy anything if there's a sheet in it. So like if we had an information icon and you hover over it and you see stuff, that has to be a sheet and you can't actually copy that component and like paste it into your thing. Right. So right away we were like, oh, this, this, this won't work. Like we have to do something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember you were disappointed. I always, I, I, you always ask me things like that. And I always said, no, don't do, 
we cannot do that. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? No, we we won't find a way, Robert. I like it. In eighty, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you've tried it already you've hit you've hit the wall yeah. your head against the wall many times <laughs> yeah and what like the end result that you see just know that's like oh 100 that's like a, the most amount of time i feel like <laughs> anyone has ever put into like Language. critically critically thinking about templates and using templates at scale yeah. right like throughout an entire organization Right. So we went with the Tableau templates thing because that's what it has to be. You have to copy the entire dashboard. You can't copy specific components. Right. We named it Tableau templates just because that was already a mental model that people from the community understood. Yep. They understand what templates are. Mm -hmm. They probably understand what components are less so. So we just called it templates, yeah. Tableau templates just yeah. make it super clear about what it is um now the actual product um do you want me to share my screen yeah go for it yeah absolutely yeah. this is the stage is yours um okay so this is tableau templates now we have i'm using the tableau public version and just a quick side note just for if anyone at tableau is watching this <laughs> when i upload something to a server and there's two dashboard sizes that are different sizes please do not take the largest dashboard size um <laughs> i think from a user experience point of view the idea of a user saying what they want in the interface and then publishing that up to somewhere and it changes the size i think is a little strange i think it's always been that way though that's the first thing um <laughs> So this is product feedback. First off. Product feedback. <laughs> in, in it. Yeah. So this is Tableau templates. The first thing you'll see when you open it is just a welcome screen, right? It's just going to say what it is, mm -hmm. you know, how are these templates are different, how to use. And we have a video here that I, um, that I created and put up on YouTube. And we have some comments on publishing to server and things like that. Now, I wanted to really make sure that there were five main points uh, when we were talking about these templates, because it's easy to just think about these templates in terms of what's come before. But if I'm if I if we're going to release something, it has to be unique in a way and it has to solve problems in such a way that it almost seems in inevitable that you would decide to go through with getting the product. Right. right. So the first thing is best in class design, right? I, I mentioned this before that I think Ludovic's the best. And, you know, we designed, I designed all these things in using the Tableau UI kit. And then it was Ludovic's responsibility to match it one-to-one. -one. Right. And so that actually involves down to the minuscule level of naming layers the same, or, yeah. which is a very tedious task that I'm sure he can, that he can uh, <laughs> talk about. Um, so we're confident for sure saying these are the, the best designed templates right. out there. Number two, uh, everything has to match the Tableau UI kit. Mm -hmm. So what the, what you prototype in the UI kit, you can build in, you know, you can build using these templates. Right. Now I'll talk about some of the things that are missing from the UI kit in here. Um, and I'll talk about how we're going to solve some of those problems in the future in different releases. Number three is industry agnostic. Now I've noticed generally when people are publishing and talking about dashboards, they're very industry specific. Yeah. And I, from a design perspective, I don't understand that because that's not really how it works, right? When you're building something, it's just broken down components that build the whole. It's not yeah. actually like, you think about the entire thing and just for a specific industry. Yeah. So we've built templates that will work for any industry and will, you know, work for anyone that's using Tableau. Right. The fourth one is there's thousands of different layout possibilities. Now, one issue I've seen with templates previously is Tableau is not Figma. And what I mean by that is you can't <laughs> simply just changed layouts based on a component set yeah 
some people that know ta- uh, Figma know what I'm talking about. A lot of people don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. Just know you can't just change layouts as, as easy as you potentially could in Figma. So we had to come up with a solution for this. And we went with a delete first mentality, a, a new way of thinking about creating dashboards where you actually think about deleting instead of adding. And adding things in Tableau is historically difficult. Right. So, for example, if you're using containers, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're using containers, there's this method you see around of like adding blanks to hey, containers yeah. and then like <laughs> and then adding in your sheet and then adding in the other sheet and then deleting the blank. So there's actual strategies to work <laughs> around of how difficult it is to I love it. design. I was about to say, Ludovic, you love this. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah. It's it's I difficult. Do this, I do this all day long, you know. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not easy, right? So we had to think of okay, how do we build a small amount of templates that allow you to get to thousands of layout possibilities simply by deleting? And yeah. I'll show you what that means in a little yeah. bit. And I think the fifth thing is really important that. I would say not that it never happens in the community. It's something that doesn't happen often where this kind of goes back to our conversation of how do you stick to one thing? So this, this is, there's going to be new updates for this. It's not just going to be what you see here is what you get. It's the same thing that happens with the tablet UI kit. This is a product, right? So new updates will be coming and Ludovic and I have already been thinking about version two and what's Mm going to be in version two. So, if you got this product, the return on investment increases with each new release. Yeah. So this is something that, you know, if you really focus on a specific product, it's, it's something that, you know, that I love doing because you can actually focus on one thing and make it as good as possible. Yeah. So if we jump into the next thing here, it's just licensing, just talking about what you can and can't do with it, right. essentially. Mm-hmm. This is very common. Third thing, we have table of contents, and we wanted a way to kind of show all the different layout, general layout possibilities that you can get. Okay, yeah. So we have a basic one, which is, you know, it's a template with without sidebar or top bar, and it has a slide over for filters. Each of these is a button, so you can, nice. you can navigate to it. Second one, we have sidebar navigation, horizontal, and then we have more sidebar navigation. And I'll show all these in a little bit. Nice. We have sidebar filters top bar navigation you'll see each of these is a different button to a different theme right so each of these filters has a different theme which is which is great for people that want something a little bit different and you can take these templates and adjust the designs to your own brand i see you can take it you can put your own colors and typography on top of it yeah and then yeah and then you can change it and it's yours and then we have some more these are examples and i mean these designs you know this is ludovic for sure i was right? about like, to say yeah this yeah. is this has ludovic yeah. written all over it right <laughs> like you can tell you can tell right away like yeah exactly. this last one i mean and this one especially it really reminds me of ludovic's design yeah. style yeah. I, so I you'll be say, getting yeah i was I mean, gonna say i'll say this now um ludovic you've had a history of posting snippets of these right so you've you post sort of little components that you kind of decompose and like you see them on LinkedIn, you have them on your tablet public profile. What this feels like is all of that has been leading to this, if that makes sense. So you've been able to bring all of those together and put it into something that is readily accessible to people, which is fantastic. Exactly. I don't know what is a chicken and what is an egg, but <laughs> uh, I think. <laughs> This yeah. Name, things is this whole yeah yeah, yeah. cycle yeah but agreed with you yeah. and that brings up that brings up a good point right you just said hack so when we're talking about this product and how it's different we Ludovic really and I Ludovic and I talked a lot about what we want this to be mm-hmm. and who does it cater to so we really thought about how do we create something where we think it's objectively the best while simultaneously making it accessible for every Tableau user. Yeah. Now, often you'll see with products and applications as they get more complicated. 
So they start adding more features. Mm -hmm. You'll actually see complaints from users saying this is getting too complicated. And then a new product comes out. This is why I don't know if anyone's seen the meme of like notes apps and to do apps where yeah. they make them really complicated. And the meme is just, just to use the Apple notes and the Apple reminders. Yeah. Cause it just gets more complicated and complicated. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure this was really easy to use, but it's also the best. Yeah. And we did that in a few ways, right? Number one, we wanted to make sure that these are actually yours, right? These are your templates. You don't, these aren't like sitting on a server Correct. outside of, outside of your control. If you get this product, they're yours. You can put them on your Tableau server. You can put them in your file explorer. They are, they're actually yours. So that, that's a big yeah. piece. Yeah. Um, so no third party applications needed right? You don't yeah. need Figma. You don't need PowerPoint. Now, obviously I talked about before these hold, basically hold hands with the Tableau UI kit. So if you have the mm -hmm. Tableau UI kit and Tableau templates, you basically have a full Tableau design system. But if you have this, you, you don't necessarily need the UI kit if you don't do prototyping, right? right. It's not like you need both. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure that no if you didn't use Figma and you don't use PowerPoint or anything, you can still use these templates, which is really important. Because I think a lot right. of people just use Tableau, right? They, Correct. They don't yeah. necessarily yeah. use anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another big piece is no background images. <laughs> um, yes. We Contain do not it. want to use background <laughs> images um, for a few reasons. <laughs> One, by allowing background images, that automatically implies that you need another application which we don't want to do correct yeah um this is a huge one that i it's not really even a hot take in my opinion it's just uh oh here, here it here comes <laughs> um, no floating no floating, oh, no floating, yes. no floating. so <laughs> yes <laughs> i would say no floating um <laughs> <laughs> Not that it's the right way to go. I think it's actually been proven over time in web development that no floating, for those that don't know, floating is just the equivalent to absolute in coding. So CSS, there's a property called absolute, which yeah. is the equivalent to floating in Tableau. Websites, applications, and the entire web are not built on absolute slash floating. It's built on the box model. The box model is containers. Yeah. It's the idea of putting boxes inside of each other, naming those boxes and having a hierarchy of boxes. Yeah. Now the reason container is the correct path is because where the web went, you know, with like web yeah. web 2.0 or whatever, which is responsive design now if you have everything floating the possibilities for responsive design completely go out the window you simply cannot do responsive design with floating so the main reason we use containers is because we follow the box model we follow web standards we want responsive dashboards in the future and that's something that we're I was gonna at. say that's something <laughs> we're potentially looking at for future <laughs> releases, not to wink right. wink, but that is something we're we're totally thinking about. And the only way to achieve responsive design is with containers and having a, a structured way to look at the dashboard. Now, if yeah. for example, I look at this, I go to go to the layout. Oh yeah, my favorite thing. <laughs> oh, everything the is, hierarchy. <laughs> everything is hierarchy. Everything is named. You know exactly. You know exactly what it is. Yeah. And this is not only good for, you know, responsive design and yeah. organization, but it's good for people that are picking up your dashboards later. They understand the way the dashboard is structured, right? So yeah. this is this yeah. is really good in in so many ways. And I could probably go on the rest of the video about why container is is the right way to go about things. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. 
<laughs> and a good thing anyone can do right now, which is actually funny, if if you're on YouTube right now watching this, just right click and go to inspect and just go through everything the, is a box. Everything yeah. is a box inside yeah. of a box, inside of yeah. a box. And that's yeah. exactly what container is. Yeah. So the entire web is built on that. So mm -hmm. and Tableau itself is actually built on that methodology. Correct. Can I so, can I can I point something out here that yeah, I, go I, ahead. that before um before it leaves me, if you expand that hierarchy again, I just want to point something out that I think most people take for granted. Just fully expand it out. Um, now, I can tell you that this dashboard has had love and care put into it because I guarantee no one else can expand their hierarchy and tell you that everything that is there is actually supposed to be there. And Tableau itself hasn't added something unnecessary. Like, and it makes me happy to see this because I look at it and I'm like, yes. Everything's a section. Everything is named. No one does that. <laughs> yeah, no one good. does that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, and to say it also because even me at my work, if I don't use this template, I never do that because it's yeah. just so much time to do this. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was so happy to do it for yeah. this product because yeah. it had so much clarity, yes. so much maintainability, yes. and it's yeah. very satisfying. Also. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's the, literally the best hierarchy I've ever seen in my life. Like I, I saw it and I was like, there's not a single problem there. I love it. And I have never built a dashboard with a hierarchy that clean. So like hats off to both of you for like going down to that level of detail. It's so easy to take that for granted. If you use Tableau a lot and you, you don't know what this is like this, this, this is just amazing. So, and so you, you, it's, um, if you use the product, you do not have to create it. It's already there for you. And that's yeah. Well, yeah. It's also a beauty of it, I guess. Amazing. Sorry to take you off the trail of thought there, bro. But no, that's great. Yeah. And, there's, and just for reference, like uh, major props to Ludovic for <laughs> looking at the way I named my layers and just matching them one to one. And also yeah. there's a huge meme in the design community about whether you should name your layers or not in Figma. <laughs> So I named all of my layers in the Tableau UI kit, and they match uh, basically, essentially one to one in this in this product. So that was Amazing. that was the big thing we wanted to do. Amazing. Um, and the very last thing that I wanted to talk about was there are no hacks. There are no hacks. What we consider to be hacks in this product. Love so it. anyone at anyone at any level can use these. Now there are things that are in the UI kit that would involve hacks, right? So we decided to leave those out for version one and we would have to think about how we wanna integrate those into a future release, maybe calling them experimental you know, components or things like that. So people understand that these components that are in this, in a specific template are experimental and involve more, more love and care, essentially. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and, and everything is very minimal, right? So there's almost no calculations. Uh, we wanted to make sure it's it's very uh, yeah. base and lightweight. A lightweight workbook is is really important, right? So yeah. if I just hop through to these different uh, templates yeah. we have here, so yeah. this is basic. We have the horizontal here, right? So yeah. sidebar navigation, vertical icon. Amazing filter top bar. And you, you probably noticed that these look weird, right? These templates look weird and different as compared to the way you're used to seeing templates, right? Is that, so is that because of the delete mentality you talked yep. about earlier on? Yeah. So the way we decided to go about componentizing Tableau dashboards is by adding everything and letting people easily delete the things that they don't want. So for example, if you had a dashboard and you don't want internal navigation, now these are tabs, this you would use tabs if yeah. you know, you have this is just secondary navigation essentially. Mm -hmm. You can just go ahead and delete them and everything oh, scales properly. Beautiful. So we really wanted to focus on wow. letting people easily delete the things that they don't want and also scaling the things that are still there. So you can see yeah. it. When I was working with Ludovic, I said, hey, if someone deletes this, it everything else has to fit perfect, right? Like it has to- it has to collapse, yeah. It has to collapse on itself. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it has to just be exactly the same as it was before, you know, that component wasn't there. So you can essentially what you would do, you would copy and paste the workbook. And Ludovic will go over a demo later. You can copy and paste the workbook. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just delete the things you don't want. And then you simply swap out the sheet and he'll, he'll walk you through that later. Uh, now, those were all of the, the light um, templates. And we kind of oh, categorize yeah. these into different things of a top bar is, you know, normally what you would see on a website and they use top bars a lot. Applications use sidebar. That's a common practice in mm -hmm. in you know, web design. Um, so we have, you know, filters and top bar and all this. And then we get into the dark, right? These are dark, oh, dark yes, templates. Yeah. And we wanted to make sure, you know, every, every color, every piece of color and typography matches. So, you know, these are the same colors in the UI kit. You know, the, the white on top yeah. of the dark matches exactly. These icons, part of Tableau templates is you get, I think what was the number at over 1200 icons um yeah so incredible. all you would do is you would select this you know you would go in you would See edit the button there. and then all you do is choose from the different folders of icons that you have so you have consistent icons yeah yep Amazing. and so i could quickly go through dark and feel free to ask questions throughout if i i was gonna say that demo you showed of collapsing containers yet another thing that lets me know how much love and care has gone into this because you have to put thought into the hierarchy in order for that to work the way you expect it to work right like when you delete the thing that goes all the way across everything moves up if i was to delete a vertical column the other two on the other side should come in and so i think you're also using like you're literally on the bleeding edge of the features that Tableau last added to the product like what's now five years ago, right? <laughs> like in terms of containers, like distribute evenly, all of those sort of small things that make that possible, right? And Correct. you have to think that I'm hoping right, there's got to be something, right, for the layout system coming at, again at some point. It just opens a bit more out because I think that's what this needs, right? Like you shouldn't have to be like bound by what feels like a very well understood problem because now design tools everywhere use the same set of principles so yeah um it's a compliment and a frustration at the same time <laughs> yeah we we thought I, I thought a lot about it, especially when designing some of these templates and i wanted to build in i wanted to build in best practices to this now you'll notice something this sidebar just looks a little bit different than a lot of the sidebars you see on Tableau Public. In application design, you're not combining filters and navigation into one sidebar. Yeah, like that's just that's just not how it, how it goes. So, when I'm designing these templates, I wanted to make sure that all of the best practices are coming into play as well. So, let's say for example, you have sidebar navigation here. The next question is okay, I want filters. Where do I put the filters? Well, the answer is not put the filters here because that's, yeah. that's not really how you, how you would design it. Filters could go here or you could do a pop-out. So yeah. this is something where you can hide and show. Oh, nice. You can hide and show different filters. And so you'll notice through, oh, throughout, so based on what component is around, depends on where the filters go. So, so navigation it's going to stay here but as soon as you pop over to having no major navigation the filters pop over to the left and you get an information pop out that you can do yes or no yes and then you know let's say you have top bar where would your filters go if you have top bar it wouldn't go to the right because there are some very unique situations where you might put it to the right but almost no application or website puts filters to the right yeah it's always left or they have it in line yeah. so yeah. We, i wanted to make sure it follows the way that applications and websites are done Work. throughout the web yeah um and you'll you'll see it throughout and it's, everything is super intuitive it's so good honestly like the amount of time wasted in in businesses asking people who you know understand the business are you know, decent analytics, but are not UX designers to build dashboards. 
and you have to kind of moonlight in design, almost stumble into the right answer. And at the end of the day, the product you build is never going to have the same quality and attention is, and thought that you've put into this. Um, it's just incredible. And, and this scales for people, right? You can take your branding, you can take your colors, you can take your principles. Um, you can put this on your server as you highlighted and people can start from this common starting point. Um, and there's almost no excuse to get it to get it wrong because the starting point has solved most of these problems for you. It's really good. Right. And and a big thing that I wanted to focus on generally in the community, there's a lot of focus on data visualization, which makes sense, but there's no focus on the things that go around the data visualization. You'll see countless blogs and you know, conversations with people talking about data visualization. But the user interface piece of it, I think, yeah. is not that I'm saying it's harder. It's simply not an area that analysts are familiar with. Yeah. You know what I mean, they're, they're familiar with data and building charts and stuff. They're not familiar with designing and building applications. And that's kind of what these are at the end of the day. These are, these are just applications that you're trying to build for people and you have to have a good user interface around it so we wanted to focus this product really on the user interface interface part of it you'll notice it's not like we have templates for bar charts right you know what i mean yeah. there's a ton of those out there right you can go out and look at you know different ways that people build bar charts that's that's not the focus of this it's right the base the base of a dashboard and then you can add your charts to it yeah it's incredible so at the very end here we have examples now what i love about these examples one they look amazing ludovic props to you um <laughs> two is you can you can actually you get six of them i mean six is a is a good amount right so you can go through all of them yeah understand see how ludovic did it and yeah all of that yeah so those, those are the six examples. And that's kind of what I wanted to show just doing a product walkthrough. And I wanted to hand it over to Ludovic to do yeah. a demo. And he can kind of, you know, he's the Tableau expert. So I want, you know, I want him to do it but for sure. Before you do that, can you indulge me one second? Yep. If you go to the, just open a new sheet. I want to see what number it gives you. <laughs> see? not that many 81 that's incredible i was exactly. gonna say i was like right ludovic must have like something like 150 sheets or something <laughs> yeah and, only uh, 81 how have you done that that's incredible <laughs> one and another thing i keep saying another big thing we wanted to make sure this was this workbook was as lightweight as possible there you go. Because there you go. Yeah. Often what you see with template workbooks is you have to try and solve the problem of okay, here's this, but how yeah. do you solve this? Yes. How do you solve yes. yeah. how do you yeah. solve the endless possibilities Correct. of the different layouts? Yeah. And it's with oh, this methodology of just deleting. You put everything in and allow users to delete the things that they don't want. So for example, I could say I don't want you know, I don't want that container and it automatically swaps it in or out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that instantly allows us to create a base amount of templates that saves you room on your servers and in your file explorer or whatever. Yeah. It doesn't it's a play. really small workbook in reality. Yeah. Um, but it's incredible. A lot of thought went into keeping it that way. Um, our, our initial plans was not to have it that way. We were going to, I think build it on the fly kind of my thing. initial right. my initial conversation with Ludovic was let's have five thousand different you know templates that people can choose from. And as we started thinking about this, we were like, well, the actual user experience of summing someone using the product will go down as you yeah, increase the amount of templates. Because yeah, it's just yeah, overload, yeah. right? Yeah. And it, the workbook would take a long time to open. So we thought down to the very minuscule level of not only what's involved in the workbook, but the ways in which a person will use the workbook. So that right. was another big piece of it as well. That's incredible. And I like to build products uh, I can maintain too. <laughs> so, 
and it's same at work. Yeah. I always try to optimize at most uh, my, my products. So it was important for me to 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 optimize this one. Yeah. Too. yeah. That's beautiful. I like honestly, just I've not even I I deliberately didn't look at this beforehand. Like, I know you announced it last week, and Rob, we were talking a bit before that, right? Because I reached out to you last year and I said, "Hey, I hear you're working on something cool. I, I want to put it on the channel." And then I completely missed the bounce because you messaged me and I just don't use Twitter X now uh, that much. And I, I deliberately held off looking at this because I kind of wanted to have this sort of first experience. And honestly, this is fantastic. Like, I cannot understand why people wouldn't start from here, if that makes sense. Like, it's, it's so well thought through. And I have to say, people do try templates. People have tried their own templates. But I think you've you've proven just here how to go about doing that and you've provided people that starting point. And the thought that's gone into that, I don't think anyone will be able to keep up with you in terms of as you, as you release more features, as you do more work. And it's built beautifully as well. Like that's just, <laughs> it's so easy to take that for granted as well, so. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's got the ecosystem behind yeah. it as well. Yeah, right? yeah. You've got yeah. the UI kit. So it's, it's, a full, it's a full experiences, which is kind of how you're supposed to build products right it's not Correct, supposed to yeah. just be the actual result it's supposed to be the ways in which you use that end result as well yeah um so yeah we're really excited for people to start using this thing and you know i want to kind of show the ways you would actually go about using it um so i think i'm gonna hand it over yeah yeah absolutely let's see yeah and with this product, you you can have a piece of Ludovic and Robert in your hand. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. that's a really that is great a genuine point. thing. Yeah. yeah, that's a great point. That I think that's kind of also how I sold it to you, Ludovic. Which was one: Do you not have money in your department? Potentially for extra people, and you've always been thinking about like, oh, you know, we want templates or we need to build these dashboards faster, but we don't have the time to do it. We, we can't get extra people. You know, budget is tight right now. And so the way I was like, hey, Ludovic, like we can market it in a way that's saying you get the designs from someone that is a UX UI designer yeah. uh, on my day to day job, which most teams don't have. Right. And then you can also get the work of what I consider to be the best Tableau developer in the world. So it's that, mm -hmm. that combination of the two where you don't have to have that massive budget to do some of these things. It's, it's available at your fingertips mm -hmm. right now, which was a selling point. I think I talked to Ludovic about earlier. Yeah. On. Yeah. yeah. And dare I say it, people can look at how you've done the workbook and learn from it. It's not just, it's not just right. something, it's not just a template. It's actually like, you can approach this from a completely different perspective and say, hey, like I've got my template here, but now let me build on this concept. Let me actually understand how it's been done. And um, you've got the hierarchy that just spells it out. Like, this is how you do it. And this is the level of detail you've got to go to. So again, it's super useful. And that's, it's actually interesting you say that because that's actually in my uh, description tag of Nudge nice. BI. I think the last sentence is, it's around the idea of building products that add such a immense amount of value it's it's unquestionable that you should probably get them but also that it helps you to completely reassess and rethink the way you do process you do work because yeah. a lot of companies have been doing things the same way for a long time and sometimes it takes something that is such at such a high level of value add mm -hmm. that it completely changes the way you think about the way you do things in the future. And that's kind of the way I look at the way I build products. Um, yeah. So yeah, that kind of goes hand in hand there. Okay. Over to you, Ludwig. Uh, sorry. I just keep, I just keep fanboying and fangirling both of you. <laughs> Here we go. So, okay. Demo time. Um, let's leave some Josie. So what, maybe we can do is try to rebuild example five if you are okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so we got this uh, kpi matrix at the top the two charts on the left and the country one here so i have prepared because obviously i won't have time i did not have time to prepare this during this 
organizations. So I pre already prepared the different sheets I yes, need, yeah, so yeah. not that much. Let's go back to the product now. So what you will do, actually, you will look for the template you want to use. Mm -hmm. So I want to use the sidebar navigation uh, or with a primary color. Let's copy this one. We will just click on copy here. Let's go back to not this one. Sorry, I opened another one. OK. We are on this workbook with my five sheets. Mm -hmm. I will paste the template I yeah. choose. And like you said, you could have your own version of the template. You built on top our template, so yeah. it can be used. Yeah. Uh, let's hide everything, hide all sheets. So I just duplicate that. You will see that yeah. my navigation are broken, but it is not an issue. What I can do, I will do. I will call this one base and I will duplicate it after because if I want to create maybe several uh, dashboards, dashboards. In the same workbook, I can reuse this Start one and this, yeah. copy paste, uh, uh, yeah. always copy paste the base template. So I will need only, let's say, three navigations. I don't need a secondary navigation, so let's remove this one. I don't need uh, the breadcrumb, so let's remove the breadcrumb. I let let's keep it simple for this one. No metadata, and you said it already, but you see how it, how yeah, the, it's collapsed. The, everything yeah. collapsed and and resides. I won't need this button. I will keep the eye filters because I will use this to hide the filters. Yeah. I will fix my button so maybe I can add some images. Um, so I am in the UI kit uh, icons. Uh, I am in the primary one so I can choose the white. Uh, nice. White white icons i will do random stuff here because i don't yeah. know exactly what i want but yeah. edit button i will change it to use this base for example uh, let's change this one to choose let's use same random let's see <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah, so fast. So fast. This is, this is, yeah. so, so, dare I say, this also looks fun. Yeah, Did again, it's... sorry for that, but we, you will know what you want. Yeah. Let's, oh, okay. Let's rename this. Maybe the first one will be an overview. And here I will look at, I don't know, stage performance, political performance. And let's call this one. I don't know. Do you have an ID? Maybe details. So yeah. Okay. Go. I will change the title. So you don't need to. And it's a pain when you have to rethink about all your font size and font design. And you don't have to. But yeah. you don't have to go that way. It's done for you. I was going to say, like, you've got the right. Um, You've got like your H1, H2, exactly. subheading, all that stuff built through. And Springing through web design to, to Tableau, love it. Exactly. So now I have my base. Let's remove this one. Okay, delete containers here. Let's keep this one because maybe I want to navigate to another an external website. Yeah. So you will change that, and we can already maybe add an action because here you will see on this one I could say let's. I want to use this button to go on an external website, so you would add an action. Yeah. Let's do it to URL. Go to URL and let's enter nhpi.com. I would say that's the one. And I will select my navigation one. Oops. OK, that should be the one. It's on menu, so let's change it. Change this for select. Okay, same. I can change. I could change the icon here. Yeah, that's. I know I have a blank one here. I can use <laughs> it, this one. Yeah, and now <laughs> we in the most interesting part. So I could use the templates to add my sheets. So I have my old sheets. Let's uh, you first create 
oh, let's duplicate this one because, I, like I said, you maybe you want to reuse it for your next one. So it's my base. Uh -huh. Let's duplicate and let's call it performance because that's my performance sheet. Oh. Okay. Now let's begin. In, let's begin the swap. <laughs> yeah. So you you select uh, the sheet you want to swap with. Uh -huh. And you just have to, you know, you have the little icon here. Yeah. You can basically just swap and it will add the sheet instead of of the the one you already have yeah. in yeah. the template. I don't need this one, so I could say, hey, remove this one, remove this one. Yeah. I can resize a little bit, edit eight here because I designed my KPI a bit taller, but that's not an issue. Let's resize, and we have some already all tied up. Wow. Next, let's add my charts next. So I already prototyped my work on Figma. So I know I will only, only on your Tableau UI kit. So I only need uh, two columns. I will mm -hmm. remove this one. I know on the second one, second column, I only need my, my charts by country if i remember yeah. well so let's remove this yeah. one and same here i will have only two charts so let's remove this one you already so created your layout the layout you need for for the sheet for the uh, for the the dashboard you want to design now you just saying you just have to swap the sheet so let's have the channel one here let's use the product chart here and let's add the country one here. Okay. here we wow. Go. So you see that we are almost done with this example. You could change the title, say, for example, quantity, oh, sorry, by uh, channel. Let's copy paste this one. Let's do by product and let's say by country. Let's edit the subtitle. I always like to have subtitles, even if it's redundant yeah. with, for example, the dashboard subtitle, because you never know when someone will do a screenshot <laughs> <laughs> of your chart. So you yeah. keep your subtitles, your captions, and your legend code. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Else, I have out, a out content like screenshot. <laughs> yeah. Screenshots, and it, it finished in, in a then let's add the legend. Okay, let's add it here. Let's remove the title. Let's change the sizing a little bit. Let's remove the blank spot here. And, and actually, Ludovic, quickly about how much we thought about these templates is what he did right there. I had a question of in the UI kit, you're able to add legends and filters to the far right of the card. Yeah. Yeah. But the only way for someone to do that, the easiest way possible is to add a blank in the top right correct, of correct. the card yeah, yeah. and then add in the legend or filter. So now people, can, yeah. now people can easily just drag in their filter or their legend right to the top corner and it's super intuitive and, and easy to use, yeah. Yeah, I, I was about to say like, you've done the step for them and even whatever you just did there you could see all the containers and it just kind of highlighted the the web uh sort of approach to this it's crazy love it and it's also nice when you add in filters it automatically puts it into the filters into the filters yeah for you yeah. yeah why is that what if what if how have you how have you how have you figured that out is that like a trade secret I'm sorry, can you... So how, how is it that when you add a filter, they're always going into the filters pane? Yeah, basic. And to be honest, you went here, uh, Robert, but the first time you add a filter or legend, it will go there. It's mainly because I, I designed my my templates. I, if you go, if we go to the, not to, yeah, maybe the base one. Oh, sorry, is that on top? Oh, I can remove that. <laughs> okay. When I, the last time I used filters in this template, it was in this. In that container. position. So, so it that's where it's. I, I and this is why when I, yeah. I my legend arrived here. And then when I clicked on filters, 
my filters right, go at there yeah. until I I moved my first filters here. My first right, filter. Right, right, right. I get it. I get it. So you just have to finish the work. Basically, if you like, if you are like me, you will only choose. <laughs> basically, most of the time, drop downs. Yeah, I have, yes, I have to make changes, but I think it's really great from the the base template. And basically, you got your. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's done. It's done. And Ludovic, you still have to. You got to oh, delete. Yeah, it's yeah. the top filters we don't need because we choose these filters. Correct. So now we got the template done. Yeah, the, the work will be the dashboard is done. Sorry. That's amazing. <laughs> I think it built it faster than you could build this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, to be honest, I did not fear, so now I'm kind of surprised myself. <laughs> I don't think you could build this dashboard from scratch yourself as fast as you've just done it. Yeah. I don't think exactly. anyone could. I don't think anyone could. So you don't just get Robert and Ludovic. You get Robert and Ludovic on steroids. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe we will spend a little more time, but I don't expect you to spend, like, two hours to do that. It will be very fast. Yeah, you've just done it. You, you did it. Like I, I when, when you said you were going to do a demo, I was like, okay, yeah, this is a real sort of proof in the pudding. Is this going to take 15 minutes, 20 minutes? I was completely off. I was, it was like five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. And I would say normally something that if you already knew exactly what you were going to do, it would take you probably like an hour. Yes. But yes. It's building in all of the years of experience of Ludovic Correct. and I to have, have you, what's the saying where it's like, you know, if a plumber comes over, you're not really paying them for, for that job. Yeah. That job. It's the years of experience Correct. that goes into being able to solve that problem as quickly as possible. Correct. Right. So yeah. that's kind of the way that we think about it as well. And if you have enough experience, like, for example, myself, I can see myself doing that, you know? Okay, yeah. maybe you just, you just need the, the layout, the framework, but the framework, you want yeah. to build from scratch. And so you have also this possibility to build from this blank page and build your own, your own layout yeah. if you yeah. want something more complex or you have ideas. Yeah. But yeah, you have the two oh, options. But yeah, so but the easiest one is the easy. I'm blown away. I am, and it's, you probably can't tell because I'm just sat here quietly, just um, you know, using it. I, I've also been using Tableau not for twelve years, eleven years, right? So, and I, I think back to learning Tableau. I think back to like the challenges I've had learning Tableau, and I think I always say to people, if you're learning Tableau today, it's a much bigger platform than it was eleven years ago, right? Eleven years ago, you could learn every corner of Tableau and know it inside out. That's when we learned, right? But today, that's just a completely different challenge. So this also presents an opportunity to people to, to really focus in on the thing that matters. That is data analysis, right? Like what you just did there is you deleted this necessity to become UX designers, to become designers, to, 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 to waste time repeating tasks. I didn't see you right-click format anything. I didn't see you... Uh, change the size of anything. I didn't, the only thing you edited was the height, but that was to get to your like thing. The delete mentality kind of completely pays off there. And now I get it. When you said delete, I was like, but why should I just drag everything where I needed to? But of course, Tableau is not predictable like that. And that's why the delete first mentality has to happen. Tableau, if you're listening, make it more predictable. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, Wow, and that's probably why people go to floating because floating is semi predictable. You put something there, and to you, it shows it to you. And the thought I had back then was, who even uses responsive design, right? Because in I'd love to know the telemetry of what percentage of dashboards employ responsive design deliberately. I don't know how you'd measure that, but yeah, it's super it is. It is low. It has to be, yeah, for now. It is low for now, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, exactly, exactly. I'm not saying the exact words, but the percentage is low for now. And, right. and just so people know, a lot of web frameworks are built on mobile first mentality. Correct. So I find it a bit frightening that we're building on 
a framework that's just floating and there's basically no you know yeah. thinking about mobile or tablet so really what you should be doing is thinking about breakpoints from this Correct. from media, this, media amount media creates, yeah. this amount of pixels to this amount of pixels it's this yeah. design yeah desktop to tablet to mobile landscape to mobile right so yeah. um that's something we're really going to look at because we think it's a feature that is like majorly overlooked yeah. in Pablo. Yeah. Mainly because it's fairly difficult. And actually the design knowledge is different from mobile yeah. to desktop. It's it's actually a completely different way to think about design. This yeah. So yeah. Wow. And so yeah, I won't I won't try and second guess where you're going because then I'm just wish casting and I think you've shown enough um what you show me today is kind of enough proof to know that whatever you do with mobile is going to be the right thing because you kind of thought about it and um, you thought about the product in so many good ways um yeah it's incredible i love it it's really really good um i think i wonder do you do you see any opportunities with the um, the noise around uh custom chart types and being able to augment what you're doing with that so in general, like I mentioned before, this is generally staying away from data the visualization. Customer. And I don't yeah. think the actual things that change about the data visualization would change with the user interface. Right, right. Um, so I don't think, you know, the, the what do they call them? Viz extensions? Viz extensions, yeah. So if anything... They become a part of this. If anything, it just, it, it more, it helps you integrate it even even more. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You can think about Viz extensions and the chart types in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, this is very user interface and skeleton based yeah. level thinking. And that's kind of what yeah. design systems do. It helps you think about it in the smallest, I don't know if anyone's read atomic, atomic design, yeah. but this is having atomic design mentality for sure. And it's, we only need, uh, we only need lines and bars anyway so <laughs> <I'm kidding. Yeah. laughs> no i'm kidding of course. oh god uh fun fun question have you thought of how many possible things you could build with your kit because I, I see this delete first mentality and i'm like but clearly there's zones for everything so there must be some sort of crazy multiplier because you've got six different styles of sidebar and then within those you've got what feels like eight or nine possibilities. So then there must be literally tens of thousands of possible things possible. I don't know if you thought of that. Oh, I've totally thought about that. And <laughs> I have it, I have it in the marketing on the website. Um, What's the number? What's the number? Oh, I don't have the exact number, but it's, okay. it's a lot. Uh, I think right. for I was able to do it easier in Figma because each of the Figma components, you have different variants. So you can say so you can see. nine times four times 13 times 15 times four, and you add them all together. And that's how many you get. It's slightly harder in this in instance. Tablet, to do it. You have to look um, at it, yeah. But yeah, it's thousands, thousands and thousands. Cause there's Jeez. different permutations of it. If you delete one container, it's a different permutation. Mm. So there's a thousand different layouts. Um, you need a, you need a Tableau public book marklet that like when you're on a Tableau public viz, it tells you how to customize your template to that layout it would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that would be yeah. really cool. <laughs> yeah, I think I think just this delete first mentality it's um, perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Is it's just a new way to think about designing it's things faster. Really small. Tableau. Yeah. And so that came from the constraints of Tableau itself, mm -hmm. right? It's not that easy to add, so we had to think of a different way to do this, and that, you know, yeah. So we did, which is great. Amazing. I am blown away. So, what are people like me going to do? What are people, like Ludovic? You're okay because you're part of this project. But what are, like what, I'm sat here building dashboards. What am I going to do? I just turn into like a template master now. Sure, right. <laughs> I. <laughs> One, I, throw that, I throw that question to you in jest. Of course, that's not the case, but like yeah. it's the kind of question that I get from people like with AI and stuff like that. So I, I, I sort of might as well pose it to you. How do you see dashboard developing changing because of tools like this? 
I would actually uh, have Ludovic answer this question because <laughs> I am, it's not my day to day job, right? Right. I'm yeah. Really I think you, it's like AI, you, it allows you to spend more time on the user experience and to focus more on your stakeholders and, you know, be able to answer to their needs and objective uh, without thinking too much about yeah. the availability of it. And like Robert said, it's, it's also when you build this kind of, of product, it's also an enabler for the next one to come after the next one to come. When I build new uh, new experiences, uh, when I build, uh, create new stuff, it's always a good example of what is possible to do with Tableau or in the dashboard community, I don't know. Yeah. And it allows people to, to say, hey, I want this, I have an idea, I want this for my next dashboard because it will be useful for me. Yeah. So it will save time to answer the question your stakeholders needs and they will also be able to to see the new opportunities for for the, the products to come i guess yeah amazing amazing you know i think of it as in so many job posting you see dashboard developer and maybe you'll see less than that and more of a you know data visualization expert or data analyst right because really no one actually needs dashboard designers and developers. We actually just need people who understand the data. Right? I think you, your other role is data engineering to, to an extent, right? So that is really where the brains are needed, right? Um, layout should really be a solved problem. And I think that's why Figma is so good because it, it kind of, it really disrupted the way Adobe was going about things, right? Really making things tough to use on things that were already well understood. Um, and yeah, um, yeah, I'm yeah, blown away. I've, I've I've said before that over time the amount of titles that keep getting added on to analysts <laughs> is increasing by the day, right? Okay, you're an yeah. analyst. You have to understand data visualization best practices. You have yeah. to understand data and you need to know like how to do ETL. Okay, but now you need to be a user interface designer. You need to understand design concepts like crap contrast yeah. repetition alignment proximity you need to know <laughs> x y and z and it's just so overwhelming for people if, yeah. if people can really just focus on the data and getting to actionable insights for their users that's like the main point of this we want analysts to focus on their users yeah um, yeah and so we hope we hope that this solves a long-standing problem that i've had with tableau which is like you just mentioned just general layout mm -hmm. which is not that easy to do and we hope this this kind of solves it and it's just going to get better which yeah i i love to think about in terms of products if you ever think if you ever see someone it's okay to have critiques for specific projects but i like thinking about it the reverse of this is the worst it'll ever be mm -hmm. right and yeah. the same that just applies to the Apple Vision Pro just got released. And I like yeah. saying, hey, it's this the is the over. absolute worst this yeah. product is ever going to be. Yeah. And you should actually be excited that it's the opportunity. in the world. Yeah. That it yeah. that it exists and that yeah. and yeah. that it'll get better from here. Yeah. So that's I would say anyone out there, you know, give it a try, ask us questions, send us yeah. emails. Yeah. If you have any feedback, if you have any suggestions just let us know and we're going to be making new updates. So your feedback will directly go into this and we just want to make it as good as possible. Essentially. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I, I couldn't endorse it more if I tried. Um, I'm going to have a go with it now. Now that you sort of walked me through it, I'll uh, yeah. maybe, maybe I'll use it as my starting point uh, for getting back into data storytelling. Cause again, I've not built a dashboard for Tableau public in I think now nearly two years. Oh, wow. Well. It's yeah, time. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I've built like one sheet. Those are not dashboard. Those are not sort of these big efforts that people put into it. So maybe it's time. But anyway, look, I really appreciate you guys spending your time uh, walking people through this. Um, it's kind of hard with product launches, isn't it? Because you kind of want people to get your product in the in the right light. So, um, you know, as Robert said, if, if, if you're not sure about anything, head to their website and um, I'll, put a, I'll put a link on the screen and in the description. 
go check them out. And uh, yeah, I think it's a fascinating tool. So absolutely use it. Can awesome. It yeah, really <laughs> appreciate the time and, and so. you know, having us on. It was, it was fun as always. You know, I love having these conversations. <laughs> with yeah, it's, it's our second time, Rob. We should make it like a yearly thing. Let's not let it go by. Yeah, I mean, we could, I could have a yearly conversation <laughs> where we just talk about tech in general. Just talk about in general, talk. yeah. <laughs> Easy. Let's let's Easy. add a new person every time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Next time uh, you need to bring a, a third person in. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing.